Let's look at an amazing feature in Power Query called Query Folding. Query Folding is the act of offloading transformation steps to a source device, like a SQL Server, to decrease processing time by using a device or devices with more powerful and plentiful resources. When working in Power Query in either Excel or Power BI, the Query Settings panel displays the applied steps. Think of the applied steps as the recipe that describes how to prepare your data. Behind that list of displayed steps lies a set of coding called mCode. So this is the language Power Query speaks when it applies transformations to data. If Power Query was responsible for processing the data completely on its own, this is the code that would be executed. Speaking generically, this is the query evaluation process. We use Power Query to create a set of transformation steps, whose point and click actions through the user interface are turned into mCode. That M code is then submitted to the Power Query engine. Not only are those steps submitted to the engine, but other information is submitted as well, like credentials or data source privacy levels. The Power Query engine will then submit a request to the data source, like a SQL server. The data source will perform any local transformations that are possible, and then send those results back to the Power Query engine. The Power Query engine will then perform any additional transformations that the data source was unable to perform, combine those results, and then load them to the destination, like an Excel table or Power BI data model. When Power Query executes this evaluation process, it will optimize the M code to decide which steps can be offloaded to the data source versus which steps must be performed by the engine itself. This offloading of steps is what's called query folding. There are essentially three query folding levels that this process will fall into. Either no query folding will occur, partial query folding will occur, or full query folding will occur. No query folding is exactly what you think it is. All processing has to be performed by the Power Query engine. This is typical when working with unstructured data sources like comma delimited or tab delimited text files or Excel spreadsheets. Partial query folding is where some data processing is performed by the Power Query engine, while other steps are performed by the data source. Any steps that can be offloaded to the data source are folded. And then lastly, full query folding is where all processing is performed at the data source level. This is typically observed when working with structured data sources like SQL servers and OData servers. We'll start off by examining what exactly makes query folding break. We'll look at some tricks to get it to unbreak, but then at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you by rearranging the execution order of the steps, you could potentially take a query that takes many, many minutes to perform and reduce that down to just seconds. When working with Power Query at a local level like in Excel or Power BI for desktop, we can see all the applied steps, but it's difficult to understand exactly which steps are being offloaded to the server versus which steps are being processed locally. If you happen to be working with Power Query Online, also known as Dataflow, the Applied Steps window is more sophisticated. Not only do we have all these nice icons that are somewhat graphically descriptive of the step being performed, we get a set of indicators off to the right to let us know where processing is actually occurring, either at the source data level or at the local level. The five indicators are as follows. Folding, which indicates that the step is taking place at the data source level. Not folding, the data processing is taking place at the local machine. Might fold, which means it's difficult to determine until the query is actually executed, so this is determined at runtime. Opaque, which is a little more inconclusive. This has to deal with the vagaries of certain types of connectors, or when you're working with things like constant tables, or a transformation feature or connector that isn't supported by the indicators in the query plan tool. Or unknown. This one shows up when you're working with non-table-based objects. You'll see this frequently at the source step when you're making that initial connection to the data source. Let's examine this query folding process in the online version of Power Query so we can take advantage of all of the indicators. Afterwards, I'll show you what this looks like in regular Excel or regular Power BI. It's not as pretty, but you can still obtain the necessary information. So as you can see, I've connected to a SQL server and then loaded one table called sales order header. The first step is indicating that this is a foldable step, notated by the icon and the similarly colored line to the right of it. Now to keep the visual from being cluttered with icons, the next step where we actually selected the sales order header table, that step two is foldable, but all we'll see is a continuation of the line. So if you perform 10 steps from here and they were all foldable, you'll see the icon once, but you'll see that vertical bar next to every one of those steps. They're basically links in the chain. Now, I don't want all of these columns. I only want certain columns. So let's go up and perform a choose columns operation. I'm going to clear my list, and I'll only preserve certain columns from that table. I'll hit OK. Now, one of those columns was actually a field that links to another table. And if I click next to the word record, 
I can peek into that table and examine the related fields. So let's say that I want to extract the state province and the country region field from this related table. So we'll go up and do an expand table operation and I'll clear the whole list, only keeping state province and country region. Hit OK. And I now have a total of seven columns in my table. Looking back to the right, notice that the choose column step and the expanded table step were both foldable operations. So, so far the links in the chain remain unbroken. Now what if we wanted to take subtotal, tax, and freight, add them all together, and create a new column called total? So with those three columns selected, let's go up to add column, and notice that the GUI does not support the addition of more than two columns at a time. So here's a little trick. We'll start off with just subtotal and tax. Now the GUI works and we can perform an add operation on subtotal and tax amount. Now if we examine the M code, we can see that subtotal plus tax is the mathematical operation. But let's just go into the M code and give it an extra thing to add, like freight. So even though the GUI only supports the addition of two columns at a time, we can use that to get the wheels moving and then we can add as many columns as we like. Looking at the applied steps, this inserted addition step is a foldable step. In other words, this can be performed at the data source level. Now looking at the order date column, this has been data typed as a date time data type because we're just respecting the data typing from the source system. But maybe I don't need the time component, so I'll go up here and I'll change it to a date data type. So far, everything in the chain is still foldable. But now let's do something that will break that chain. What if we were to go to the country region column and do something like a right click, transform column, text transformation, and execute a capitalize each word operation? That is not a supported step at the server level. In other words, the data source does not possess a function that will go through and capitalize the first letter of each word. So at this point, that query folding chain has been broken. Now what if I want to only keep states or provinces that are not England? So let's go up and perform a simple filter operation. We'll remove England from the list. Hit OK. Even though the SQL Server possesses the ability to perform a WHERE operation and perform filtering, because we broke the chain when we capitalized each word in country region, filtering can no longer be folded back to the server. Let's go up to the addition column, give it a rename, and we'll call this total. Renaming is typically a foldable step, but because we broke the chain when we capitalized each word in the country region, everything from this point now has to be performed locally. So let's go up to total and do a descending sort. Sorting, which is also typically something a SQL Server can perform, is now having to be performed locally because of that same problem. So we can see here in the indicators, everything from source to change column type is foldable, but once we hit capitalize each word, we broke the chain, and now everything has to be performed locally. Now there is an exception to this broken chain process. The manipulation of the country region column is what caused the chain to break. Well, let's see what happens if we were to remove this column. Once that original offending column is out of the data source, we can go back and resume query folding. So doing something like going up to order date and pushing all of those dates to the ends of their respective months with something like transform, date, month, end of month, these steps have resumed to being performed at the data source level. So if this was executed in series, we would perform a certain level of query folding, a certain level of local processing, and then some more query folding. This could potentially result in multiple queries to the data source. Now the good news is in certain cases, when the query is executed, Power Query may rearrange the order that these steps are performed in order to get all the foldable steps to go together, thereby resulting in only a single query back to the data source. But this is dependent on the data and the transformations being executed. Here we are in Power Query back in Excel. Now unfortunately the Applied Steps interface doesn't have all those beautiful icons and indicators, but we can still determine exactly which steps are foldable and which are not. To figure this out, if you go to a step and right click, in the right click menu, if you see the option that says View Native Query, this is a foldable step. You get to see a translated version of the M code that's going to be sent back to the data source. So if I were to go up here to Source and do a right click, notice View Native Query is not visible. This step falls into the camp of unknown. Because it hasn't communicated with the data source yet, it hasn't been able to download any of the schema information to understand what that source is capable of. Now once it does, the next step, Navigate, which is a foldable step, that behavior will be applied retroactively to the source and the source step will be folded. So looking at Choose Columns, View Native Query, this is the code behind it. Notice this code is substantially smaller than the code before. Because if we had stopped at the navigate step, 
These are the instructions that would have been sent back to the server and then what would have been returned as a result. This is returning all of the columns from the table. But the next step has eliminated some of those instructions to tell the server we only need a subset of fields. This instruction has the potential to greatly reduce processing time because you're not downloading a whole set of information just to turn around and throw it away. Here's the next step where we extracted columns from an adjoining table. This performed a left outer join on the two tables. Then the inserted addition step, which took subtotal tax and freight and created a new column called total. The next step, change column type, is where we perform that data type conversion on the order date field. Now here's the point where in the previous version of query folding the chain was broken, the capitalization of each word. If I right click on this step, view native query is not selectable because this is not a foldable step. Now even though filtered rows is typically a foldable step to a SQL server, if we right click, view native query is not available because the chain was broken. And as long as that column that broke the chain exists, nothing from this point forward will be folded. We go to sorted rows, which is something a SQL Server can do, but we right click, view native query is still disabled. Removing columns, this was the step where we actually removed that offending column. And once we did that, right click, view native query now works again. Looking at the underlying SQL code, notice that the country region field is not being procured from the data source. And then finally, calculating the end of month, that step can be folded back to the server level because we've resumed a good working relationship back with the data source. Let's now take a look at query optimization and showcase how by simply rearranging the order that steps are performed, there's the likelihood that you could greatly improve the performance of your query execution, in some cases, even up to by 99%. So here's a simple query that's not too different from the one we just executed. We connect to a source, we navigate to a table, we do some sorting, filter out some of the rows, filter out some of the columns, and do a little column renaming. But note the indicators. The first three steps are foldable, but the last three are not. So we connect to the data source, we navigate to the product table, we sort the rows in ascending order by standard cost, and then I wanna keep the 10 records with the largest standard cost. Well, because I sorted in ascending order, those 10 records are at the very bottom of the table. So I'll do a keep bottom row step and keep the bottom 10 rows. But the moment I do that, I break the query because SQL does not possess a clause that can be used by a select statement to extract rows from the bottom. So from this point forward, all processing has to be formed by the Power Query engine, such as the filtering out of columns and the renaming of columns. Now back here at the sorted rows step, imagine if this data source had a million records in it. You would have to download all 1 million records to then in the very next step, throw out all the records except for the last 10. How long is it going to take you to download a million records? Let's see if there's any way to get the steps that occurred after the point where the query folding broke and get those steps to once again fold. Let's take choose columns, which is really just vertical filtering, and let's perform that vertical filtering before we perform the horizontal filtering or the row filtering. So we'll take choose columns and move it up above the kept bottom row step. And notice now the selection of the columns is once again foldable. So the moment we extract rows from the bottom, the chain is broken, and then everything that comes after it is also broken. Well, let's take rename columns and put it above the point where query folding broke. Now we've offloaded even more of that processing back to the data source. Even though we have most of the steps folding, we're still having to download a million records just to turn around and throw most of them out. Now, even though SQL does not possess a clause that can use by a select statement to keep rows at the bottom of a table, there is a top clause that can be used to retrieve rows from the top of the table. So let's do this. Let's go back to the sorted rows step. And instead of sorting our table by standard cost in ascending order, what if we were to sort in descending order? This would place the 10 largest values in the standard cost column at the top of the table instead of the bottom. Let's go to the keep bottom rows step and remove this step. And in place of it, we'll do a keep rows from the top and we'll keep the top 10. Notice that capturing rows from the top of the table is a foldable step. This query is going to be executed one time and the server will only return 10 records. So again, if this was a million record data set, all things being equal, this would execute 100,000 times faster. So if it took 10 minutes to refresh the initial query of a million records, it would take 0 0.006 seconds to refresh the query to return only 10 records. So hopefully you understand query folding a little bit better than you did at the beginning of this video. Go back and look at your queries. See if just reordering the steps can improve performance. Try to locate at which point query folding broke, find out why it broke, 
and then either keep it from breaking in the first place or possibly repairing it so that it can perform more operations than it originally did. As always, let me know what you think about this in the comments. If you have any success stories on how you were able to make your queries perform faster, put those stories down there. We'd love to read them. Thank you for watching, and remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.